click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, welcome back to the subject of machine design work. We are right now learning or we are right now working on the numerical which are depicting the combined stresses and how to solve them. So today let us look at such an example where multiple loadings are given. Let's quickly read out and try to understand the problem statement. It says that a shaft carries a pulley at center. So there is a shaft and a pulley is mounted at the center between two bearings. So definitely the shaft has two bearing ends given as the supports. The bending moment MB is given. It's, it varies between 200 Newton meter and 600 Newton meter. So these are the two extreme values given. So in this problem there is no normal stress given or there is no normal load is given, no axial load is given. Instead, they have given us the bending stresses. At the same time, the torsion or torsional stress or torsional torque, torsional bending moment, you can call it, varies from 70 Newton meter to 200 Newton meter. The frequencies of these variations are same. The way they change are same as that of the speed of this particular shaft. So along with the speed or the nature or the cycle of the speed of that shaft, they also do vary. The properties are given, the material properties are the ultimate strength is given which is 540, the yield strength is given which is 400, the endurance limit corrected one of course is given 200, factor of safety is also given. We need to find out the shaft diameter in our case. So the problem does fall under the fluctuating load category plus the combined loads are the bending moments and the torsional moment and the material properties with factor of safety given. Let's proceed with the solution part. So students as usual let us find out the mean values and the amplitude values for bending stresses or bending moment as well as the torsional moment. As of now they have not given us the stresses like earlier case they had given us the load values in our case they have given us the bending load or bending moment values and the torsional moment values. Let's substitute the values. The variation that is happening in bending stress is 200 minimum and 600 maximum. After solving this particular expression, we get the value as 400 Newton per millimeter square. It becomes 400 Newton meter. That is what the mean bending moment that I have. Let's proceed with the amplitude value of this bending moment where maximum value of 600 and minimum value of 200 will be considered and therefore the value comes out to be 200 Newton meter. Let's move ahead and do the same thing or repeat the same thing with the torsional moment. In case of torsional moment, the maximum value is 200 and the minimum value is 70. After solving this expression will get it 135 Newton meter. For the amplitude value again, so this is how we have found out four different values of the mean and the amplitude values of the bending moments and the torsional moment. These are not the stresses, so let us convert them in terms of the stresses also. It's very simple relationship between the normal stress or the stress value with the bending one because we are using here the bending equations and the shear equations. We have already modified them in the previous numerical. Here we are simply using them. So let us move ahead. The first value that we have obtained is 400. So let us write down the expressions first so that we can write down the answers quickly. 
Now one thing is very clear that since we are supposed to find out the sharp diameter at the end, the factor d is going to be constant. The factor d is going to be an unknown value, and which we can find out for this value separately. In the same manner, for the torsional value. And torsional amplitude value. After solving these expressions, we'll get the answers. The first value comes out to be somewhere around the second one, of course, is lesser than that. The next one comes out to be, and the last one comes out to be so these are these trace values that we have obtained. Since we have considered the modified units, they all have or they all carry the same unit that is Newton per millimeter square. So we have obtained now the values of the mean stress and the amplitude stress in x direction as well as the shear stress in x y direction for both the mean value and the amplitude value but somehow this loading is a combined loading and that's why we must use a formula that connects both of them so let us connect those formulae in x direction the mean value of stress is the first expression of course after evaluation we will get a proper expression let's write down the expression for the next segment also the desired value of the mean stress of the combined loading and the value of the amplitude stress will become so now we arrived at the main features which are the mean stresses and the amplitude stresses it is very easy for us to find out the slope of the line between them and that comes with the expression ratio so if you go for the ratio expression we will get after eliminating some of the factors we will get it after evaluating this particular expression we will get value of theta somewhere around 26.5 degree after this it is quite easy for us to draw the Goodman criteria using the graph the graph is same as that as previous example where the endurance limit is connected with the ultimate point of course since the value of the yield strength is given we can see a diversion also in that particular factor but this is of course in no way is a safe value this diversion may occur for some of the reasons but we are not concerned that it's only for the understanding purpose this is what the theta which we have found out right now so there is one expression or this equation that line has and there is another equation that this line has again now let us write down the following equation so we know that for goodman equation this is always the expression so 
let us substitute the values there and the expression obtained becomes of course this particular value is unknown the yield value corrected one given is 200 plus this value also is an unknown but the ultimate value is given 540 is equal to 1 let's call it expression number 1 there's another relation also that we have recently found out the ratio between the amplitude and the mean stress can be said that the ratio between amplitude at any point say i which is an intersection point divided by the mean stress at again i so the expression for this tan theta comes out to be somewhere around this particular value upon solving these two expressions we will get sigma amplitude at i section or intersection point i and sigma mean at intersection i and they are equal to so these are the desired value at that particular point these are the going to be the values of the amplitude as well as the mean stress but we again know that the relation between factor of safety and the amplitude stress is given it's quite simple the substitute the values that we have obtained as of now factor of safety mentioned is 2 and therefore the amplitude stress obtained here comes out to be 2 which is the safe amplitude value but we know that there is another relation that sigma a is given by an expression now substituting this value because we can compare both of them we can find out d3 very easily and after solving that we will get d value is somewhere around 33.29 millimeter so this is how the diameter is found out using the goodman criteria for the fluctuating loads given to us so let me quickly repeat students because there we end with the answer because the diameter the desired diameter for the given condition comes out to be 33.29 millimeter what we have done is we have considered the bending moments and torsional shear moment and then we found out the mean and amplitude value using this mean and amplitude values because the or the using them all together simultaneously because of the fact that they coexist at the same problem and that's why their modified version modified empirical relation was used to find out the amplitude and the mean value these values when used in the given expression we found out the amplitude value at that particular point where these values are given or that failure may take place and there we found out the shaft diameter so that was from my side in this particular last lecture there we end with the module number four where we have finished the design or various design aspects of fluctuating loads two things need to be understood that fluctuating loads may have different nature like reverse nature or repeating nature no matter what nature it has the design procedure is slightly different than the static loading or static design procedure here we have to consider certain factors which will take care of the nature of the loads which is not static or which is reversing or repetitive nature various problem we solved various new concept also we came across so that is what the module number four is all about thank you so much for watching this video if you like this video Please subscribe to Ikeda. Thank you.